So if you understand how the women struggle to have equality, to have empowerment, all the more that you should foresee how the LGBTQ community struggles to have the rights. And as a gender advocate uh, for so many years, I could not say that the LGBTQ concerns could not be my concern. The LGBTQ community cannot just fight for their own rights. We need everyone to be there because their concerns are also our concerns. Just like how I work with, with women's rights before, it's not just the women. It's a community, it's a people's rights that we have to fight for. Because sure, the women live in a community. So if you do not address the issues or the struggles within the community, your work with women will just be part of how you empower a community. So it has to be um, holistic. We all know that in society, we are, are still living in a patriarchal society, very patriarchal society. And therefore, your policies, your structures are still modeled into the patriarchal society. Uh, the church, not all churches still believe that uh, we do have uh, our, our sexuality or our being is both spiritual and sexual. We are both spiritual beings and sexual beings. If you cannot reconcile those two, then you cannot address the needs of the one being human. So we have to be able to uh, connect that together as a church. And of course, um, we all know the Philippines prevalently Catholic church talking about sexuality is still under the move. You do not talk about sexuality in your families. You do not talk about sexual orientations or even your, your um, progress, your physical progress as a, a human being that regards to your sex. So very few families are still um, open to that. So uh, there's still, especially in the church, there's still the dichotomy of just a binary creation. It's either you are male or female, man or woman. So if you deviate from that, then you are a deviation and you are an irregularity of creation. And that's how uh, the LGBTQ community is treated. So we need to take a look into not just how we are feeling as individuals, but we need to take a look into the wider perspective of structures and policies within our institutions. So in the school, uh, we know that um, so many years ago we have tried the student organizations, and of course, it was not allowed in Siliman. Uh, in the churches, for example, yeah, they would say that uh, we are welcoming. Uh, specifically, if I talk about UCCP, we were the first church, or first denomination in the entire country to release an LGBT policy statement. So we call it Grace the Total Statement in support of the LGBTQ uh, community. Uh, we now have the IFI, Iglesia Filipina Independiente, who released their policy statement last February 2017. So there are two official denominations now who are uh, into this. But then again, of course, when you go to the local churches of the UCCP, for example, the conservatism among the older members or leaders are still there. So it's still a struggle. So even if you say now that, uh, yeah, we are a, an open, welcoming co uh, congregation, what does it mean when you say you are an open, um, welcoming congregation? I'll go into that um, later. So again, policies, so policy statements are there, but in law, as, as discussed this morning by uh, Attorney Ben, ben Major. Yeah. Uh, the law is not yet approved. It's still in the works, in the committees, in Congress. So policy-wise, in government, we don't have that yet. But we do have, I think, several uh, localities already uh, that have their own local ordinances. Cebu has one. Uh, Ilo Ilo City has one. So these are just very few local government units who have policies that are in favor of the LGBTQ community. 
community. So we need more uh, advocacy work for policies. So that could be one of those that your uh, LGBTQ community or organizations could think of. So it's, you, draft, you just draft an ordinance, look for a sponsor in the legislature, and you work on the processing of the approval of such policies. Okay, advocacy is, is one um, that we need to work on. Uh, just like women, the women's struggle, we need advocacy work also for the LGBTQ. Um, there's, at, at the home in the Philippines, one of our struggles uh, when we do our alliance work is the LGBTQ community themselves are not united. Medyo kalapa. <laughs> and they have this, you know, competencies also among the different organizations that they have as an LGBTQ community. So if you could unite that, uh, these different groups, because we have a lot of LGBTQ uh, organizations in the country. So if you could unite that, then you can have a stronger voice for the concerns of, of the LGBTQ. So advocacy uh, as a science and as an art should be practiced uh, for the welfare of, of the community. Okay, so aside from that, not just the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community, but also the other groups, you know, women's groups, men's groups, uh, we should all be working together. So we, it's one of the important things is to have a network uh, to work together, to support, just like in, in the women's group, uh, when we say we need support groups, so not just not, not just psychological. If you if you are in the forum this morning, uh, <clears throat> as one of the students asked me, what can she do? Uh, being ostracized by the family uh, for being a lesbian, for being gay. If you have no support group, just like women victims of violence, for example, if there are no women shelters, where can they go? If they are all trapped in the families, in their own families, wherein they are battered, then there is no escape. There has to be a support group where they can uh, be themselves, where they can be safe. And of course, being safe means not just physical threat, psychological threat. Mentally, medically, uh, legally, these are the support that uh, we need for, for these groups. So that's why. So uh, as I said, the UCCP has already this policy statement uh, of let grace be all that. But then again, as I said, uh, there are not, it's not a perfect thing. Actually, the policy statement is, has some flows into it, uh, especially definitions and all that. But that can be improved uh, by the Faith, Faith and Order uh, Committee. Uh, so, declaring the church itself as an open or uh, welcoming congregation does not end there. You have the policy, but what do you have to concretize the ideas or the perspectives that you have stated in the policy? As inclusive as you may be, the churches are basically cisgender. They are binary, so it's either you are a woman or you are a man, no in between. You know, most of the churches would say, yeah, but generally or in reality, we have the LGBTQ community in the churches. We have members who are gays, we have members who are lesbians. But how are they treated or how are they welcome in the churches? Uh, especially so for the young. At kung magaling silang mag-arrange ng flowers in the church, uh, welcome na welcome sila. They have a lot of activities, they lead the youth in singing, in dancing, and all that. Yeah, they're very much involved. But beyond that, there are still a lot of questions why they are there. And, okay. Some or most of the LGBTQ persons are uh, or have experienced religious trauma. Um, in my, in my uh, trainings for interfaith groups, we had one training in Cebu City. 
when we're in, of course, we involve the LGBTQ community. We were talking about uh, interfaith and reproductive health uh, programs. And uh, two days after we finished, we had actually several nuns and some priests who joined us. Two days after we finished the training, the church in Cebu <laughs> declared that they should they, they are no longer welcoming all the gays and lesbians. They are no longer welcome to go to church. Of course, before, yung wala silang wala silang communion. They were not allowed to be given communion. Just like people who practice reproductive health or family planning, they are not given communion by the Catholic Church. So that happened. So basically, you are marrying uh, the LGBTQ. For it, ano bang role ng simbahan, di ba? What's the role of the church? The church should be like a mother hen who takes care of all the chicks, of all their chicks, and tries to protect them under her wings. But this church basically drove them away. So that's traumatic for one who is you know, excluded in, in such a basic uh, group that you have to be identified with. The next, uh, Challenge here is that the religious beliefs in general fundamentally disrupts the way that many LGBTQ persons uh, have learned to find meaning in their lives. Because you are different, therefore your treatment is also different. So how you develop as a person as what uh, Reverend George has been saying a while ago that while you are growing up, you know that you are different. And despite that difference, despite that diversity in you, you should still feel welcome in the church. But in reality, the church still is one of the instruments that give violence, not just to women, but especially so for the LGBTQ. And then, um, yeah, something that, that uh, the church institutions nowadays would always subject everyone into what we call the pastoral days. Who oh, what pastoral days? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So when you face your pastor and you are gay, there is that moral judgment issue within your mind. That's like, oh, here comes the pastor. And you know that your church is not welcoming and you should behave. I should behave, I, I should not be, you know, so open with my gay expressions. So you control yourself because your pastor would look at you and you're like, you are a sinner because you're gay. Where did you come from last night for the journal? For gay. Were you engaged in your play? Oh. That would always come to your mind. So there's this self-consciousness with a moral judgment that you have when you face a church person. So right there and then, it bars you from having a good relationship with your church leaders, with the other church members. 